Hello Sacred Souls and welcome back to the Sacred Soul Podcast with Faye and Beth. We are your hosts and it's lovely to speak to you again for the third time now. This will be our third episode, um, but our second actual talking session, just me and mum. And for today's topic, we wanted to cover something that most of you will have already heard of and that is meditation so we want to talk about quieting the mind a bit of mindfulness and how meditation can aid you on the journey to um, unlocking your your own soul your life's purpose um, and pretty much everything in between so I'm gonna pass it over to mum she's got some a big pile of books in front of her at the moment she's done her research for this one so I can't wait to um to get started so mum take it away meditation is a practice that allows the mind to become still and the body to move into rest and digest over time this practice enables us to access and dissect the deep unconscious workings of our mind unravel repressed emotions heal our bodies and commune with our soul It is with a dedicated and disciplined practice that we really begin the journey of getting to know whom we really are and what we have come here to learn. Most people will ask the intrinsic question of who am I, who am I supposed to be, Um, what am I supposed to be doing, what is my purpose and that's where the journey of meditation unfolds. A fantastic question to ask your soul is who am I, how can I step into my soul's destiny and this can take a long time to unravel. As our soul will communicate with our consciousness through symbolism and using sets of ethereal and emotive sensory precursors called the clairs, which are our psychic sensory perception tools and our bridge between our human and our divine self. So when we um, begin our, our kind of meditation journey, initially when we're trying to quieten the mind and still the mind, we will be represented with a lot of our repressed emotional stuff that comes to the fore. And we may see imagery, and we may hear and see and sense things around us. And this isn't always um, of the spiritual nature of, you know, of the divine. Sometimes it is just part of our human self that is just, you know, needing to be healed. And part of meditation is to, um, you know, really work through that part of what is um, intrinsically mine and and me and that needs to be healed and worked through and what is intrinsically coming from a divine source outside of myself um, or what is coming from my soul's essence and it's only with um, a dedicated practice of persevering with meditation that you become aware of these different facets of who you are my practice of meditation has spanned 30 years and it has taken me a very long time to learn to quieten my mind and allow the outside noise to silence it becomes easier the more you practice um, and science is now proving that we can um, you know access these altered states with ease the more that we practice them there are many books on meditation that explain the science behind the practice I don't profess to be an expert at all. Um, I can only guide you from my own experiences. But I urge you to read from the recommended lists that we put into um, the Sacred Soul community um, and the, 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 the YouTube links and the downloadable material um, that we put on there also. But to kind of um, graze on those at your leisure. Because you know, if this is a topic of interest to you, this is going to be something that you will work on for a, a number of years. Um, it isn't a quick fix. It takes time. You're going to have to use trial and error because some things will work for you while others won't. Um, The aim of Sacred Soul Podcast is to shine a light really on the process of growth and expansion and provide bite-sized cognitive digestible material that hopefully will inspire you to further your journey and your quest for wisdom experimentation that is the key here and some wonderful um, apps to download for yourself would be headspace calm or insight timer Um, these will enable you to um, you know play around with some of these things um, and different types until you find something that you can feel really resonates with you experienced meditators you know have significant benefits um, 
with their mental health, their physical health. But one thing they probably won't agree on is um, the most effective type of meditation because simply it's different for everybody. After all, there literally are hundreds and hundreds of meditation techniques encompassing practices from different traditions, cultures, spiritual disciplines and religions. Um, so there's not a universally accepted best or most effective type. Rather, it's more of our own individual preference that kind of helps us to choose which ones work best for us um, and all that kind of thing. Um, personally, I like to sit in stillness and complete quiet when I'm kind of connecting to um, my own higher power and um, when I'm using meditation to work from a mediumistic perspective. Um, Gordon Smith actually talks a lot about um, being in that stillness and that silence is an integral, an integral part, sorry, of, of his development and revisiting that space frequently, you know. Um, and as, a, as an integral part of my development, I've very much taken that on board that, you know, I really do spend a lot of time sitting in my own power and connecting um, to my divine essence. Um, and I think when you're quieting everything down, your mind chatter, your bodily... Um, sensations you'll then become much more aware when something enters that sphere that doesn't belong to you and this is something that when we're working as mediums especially for those of you that are looking to develop that aspect of um, of your soul um, is that it's so important to do that on a regular basis and spend many years perfecting that um, rather than trying to rush through the exercises of mediumship and psychic tools because you know, real, realistically, we need to get that foundation really kind of seamless, really, and, and knowing um, what is us and what, what is our soul um, speaking to us and, and what is coming from, you know, the divine and external from spirit. Um, you know, this is the true mediumship, really, and, and how to work. Um, so I hope that that's informative for you and helps you a little bit with... Um, you know where you're going with your meditation practice I think it's important to try and set aside time each day and um, if you know I know it's difficult for everybody to to find time in each day I know myself you know it's been a struggle recently because I've got young children in the house again and four dogs and you know a busy working house full of people there's like six seven of us living here so it's very hard sometimes to find that time to have some silence but it is possible even if it's just walking out in nature on your own with your headphones on um, if need be to drown out a bit of the external noise sometimes sitting in complete silence isn't always possible um, which is where the guided meditations and the, the music and the backgrounds are really helpful. I will be doing um, a few meditations that I will be leaving on the community hub for you as well, the Sacred Soul community, for you to listen to at your leisure. Um, just, you know, perhaps an introductory one more so to introduce you to your soul and help you to kind of connect with that and then guiding you into a place of stillness perhaps we'll do a few of those maybe some guide ones as well if you're wanting to experiment with that a little bit as well but that is the key here when it comes to um meditation it really is experimentation you know we pause to self-nourish not just to, you know to be mindful and you know it's, it's it's very important like to have that time to experiment with ourselves um and, and sit in calm and stillness. Um, there's been loads over the years that I have tried out with meditations, um, some that have been really great, some that I've not resonated with, um, you know, different vibrational sounds and frequencies. Um, you know, there's, there's so many out there that, that you can kind of just have a look at and, and find what works for you. Um, personally, for me, like I say, I prefer the stillness um, meditations or just something very you know slow and rhythmic binary beats that kind of thing um, tends to work and some of the Tesla sounds um, the different Hertz are really interesting ones to work with as well especially for healing frequencies because uh, again if you if you're a sufferer of any kind of um, ill health or mental health meditation is so beneficial for that you know, uh, myself being someone that suffers with a lot of pain um, in my everyday life, sometimes it can be very difficult to find a, a space to be comfortable in when I'm meditating and also, you know, to allow the body to to just be in um, a bit more of a relaxed state before I meditate, so making sure I've had any medication I need so that I'm comfortable, that really helps, otherwise it becomes a distraction to the meditation practice. Um, so that might be helpful for you, for those of you that do suffer with any pain, um, 
pain um, issues and that kind of thing but also anyone that's suffering with anxiety or depression meditation can be such a useful tool um, in helping you to keep calm um, again there's some great meditations chakra balancing meditations kundalini meditations i mean there's just so many i, I couldn't list them all for you really um, but playing around and finding what works for you is really the best way I've found in my development um, and in all of the years. And there are times when you're going to come to meditation and you're just not going to be able to do it for whatever reason, and that's fine. You know, draw a line under it for that day. Don't beat yourself up about it. It's not about perfection. It's not about that at all. It's just about you finding what's working for you and reflecting. You know, medita meditation is a very reflective practice. It's not just about the art of meditating. It's also about looking and understanding what's going on, the workings of your mind, the workings of your body, the workings of your emotional environment, um, and what's going on for you at that moment in time, what you need to heal, what you need to work with, you know, what you need to change. You know, this is all about meditation it isn't just about that moment when you're meditating as well. It's the journaling afterwards, the exploring what's going on, you know, and sometimes that's where the healing takes place. It's when something doesn't go to plan, when something doesn't run smoothly. That's when you can look and think, right, what went wrong there? What what didn't work? Why didn't it work? What's going on? And that's really where the education of, of meditation really steps into its fore. Um, the benefits of meditation, well, they're, they're just fundamentally so extensive. Um, from, you know, reduced blood pressure, um, reduced heart rate, to keeping you calm, going into rest and digest, helping the serotonin levels, dopamine levels. I mean, you know, it helps with um, pain, it helps with anxiety and depression, it helps with um, any kind of ailments, disease, um, issues with the body, um, all, of, all of the above really. I mean, it's, you know, there's so many physical benefits. The mental health benefits are that it reduces um, fatigue, tiredness, anxiety, depression, irritability, um, it increases focus, helps mood, improves sleep. I mean, you know, it, it's just, there's so many benefits to meditation, which is, you know, why we should all be doing it as part of our everyday life. It's a, you know, it is a self-love practice that we should be integrally incorporating into our everyday lives. Um, and I hope after this this um, podcast with with our discussions, and um, I will hopefully be leaving you something to download with some basic stuff on it as well. Please take notes through the you know the discussion so that you can you know help yourself to be guided into what works best for you. Some people use like candle gazing as well, and you know the, the water gazing and sitting by um, beautiful places in nature, immersing yourself in nature. You know, listening to the waves in real life or immersing yourself in the forest, you know, and earthing. And there's so many different ways to, you know, bird song is another lovely way I like to meditate, actually. And listening to the bees humming through the long grass and the wildflowers, that's a, a wonderful um, place to sit for meditating but again taking on board if you're not petrified of bees or wasps or, or again if you if you don't like the sound of water because you're, you're frightened of you know deep water or something like that you, you have to take all this on board what's not going to work and resonate for you so um, you know hopefully this will you know all benefit in you being able to find a practice that works for you all of these sort of pros and cons and benefits and and, and things to consider um, most importantly is getting comfortable before you start, um, you know, and, and obviously making the intention to spend some time with yourself, um, most importantly. Because when we start to talk about the soul and th the spirit, you know, and we start to talk about our, our sort of inner, inner being, the only way we can really have a communication with that is to quieten down the mind um, that is so active and some people like to call it monkey mind that the mind that's constantly jumping from thing to thing and the fact that we're in our conscious minds constantly being occupied by different things whether it be our daily routines duties our jobs our children our worries our stresses you know our physicality some of us are struggling with, with ill health whether that be mental health or physical health so there's lots of things that kind of productively take up our day in our mind and there isn't much time to kind of sit in the observation seat, um, which is where we really connect with whom we really are, um, if we have all that going on every day. And I mean, obviously, 
it's impossible to not have that all going on because we've all got busy lives, haven't we? And we're all trying to get by and earn a living and do the, the things that we need to do. But ultimately, the goal here is to try to introduce you to the importance of making a little bit of time in, in, in daily practice, really, if you can manage that. Um, but even if you can't manage daily practice, then even just starting with something as small as making time once a week and planning that in, that you, you, you spend that five or ten minutes every week reconnecting to yourself um, and, and the intrinsic essence of who you really are. Um, and you're probably, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what are you talking about? Who I really am? I know who I really am. You know, and we should ask that question to ourselves, really, on a, on a daily basis. On the concept of who are you and the importance of trying to find that space of contemplation and quietness to delve into that. There's a really interesting book actually um, that I've read many times called The Untethered Soul, um, The Journey Beyond Yourself and that's Michael A. Singer and he has a chapter in chapter three where he talks about who are you and he talks about a um, great teacher in, in yoga called Ramana Marshi um, and talks about how to attain inner freedom and, 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 and talks about how one must continuously and sincerely ask the question, who am I? What he taught was that this is more important than reading books, learning mantras or going to holy places. It's just that simple question of asking, who am I? Who sees when I see? Who hears when I hear? Who knows that I'm aware? Who am I? So I think that's the really important thing that we need to ask ourselves, isn't it, is who really am I, you know? And that is something we can only attain through quietening the conscious mind and going into the observation seat, into our unconscious mind. Well, actually, even beyond the unconscious mind, because I believe we're even further back in, our, in, in what we would maybe like to describe consciousness than our unconscious mind. I believe the soul is is something that is even more magical and majestical than that part that we call the unconscious. And it's a part of us that is connected to everything and everyone. And, you know, and that is something that we all need to gauge an understanding of to really evolve and to really learn about who we really are and what we really want and how to make ourselves happy. And I believe that meditation is, is really the tool um, to, to get to that place it is really the vehicle that we need to travel with to get into that space in our minds um in our souls actually and um, so i think where i'm going with this is 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 really talking a lot about you m making that time and that, that routine in your life to spend time meditating and most of you are probably thinking as i know beth will because she she really doesn't <laughs> enjoy meditating at all um and sorry, you can hear the seagulls and birds in the background. We have the, the doors open in our lounge to let in a little bit of fresh air on this hot summer day. But then it is another form of uh, mindfulness, isn't it? Listening to nature. It is indeed. So probably a good backdrop for the episode. Yep, that's true. And I know you hate meditation, don't you? Because you find it really hard to quieten your mind. Beth Beth has ADHD, mildly, but uh, my <laughs> son also has um, ADHD. Um, and they both struggle with that kind of monkey mind and being able to quieten... The, the, the thoughts and the drives and the desires of you know jumping from thought to thought it's just difficult isn't it because it's distracting i find a lot of the time that my mind is focused on other things constantly mm -hmm. and i think also that's part of my anxiety is always thinking about things that are going on in the future yeah and what if this happens what if that happens thinking of new and exciting hobbies that i can come up with and you know different things that i want to do that mm -hmm. when i actually have time to settle down I just, I completely just shut down as in, I just go straight to sleep. Yeah. And I do really struggle. I've been trying to do guided meditations before bed, which I found worked really well for me in the sense that I could listen to it as I was drifting off. But mm -hmm. then again, like you say, you're not fully no. committing to shutting off your mind. You're just listening to it as you fall asleep. And you fall asleep, exactly. And I think a lot of us are guilty of doing that, and myself yeah. included, especially after a busy day, which is why I always try to, if it's at all possible, to try to make your meditation practice in the mornings. Because also, you know, according to Ayurveda, you know, the morning time is really the best time to um, to do that 
and have that meditation time because it's first light, your body's preparing itself for the day, you know, you're still in that altered state um, from sleep, from dream time. So your mind is still very much connected um, to the unconscious. And so it's easier to slip into that space of quietness and to be reflective. Um, so for, for you, Beth, what you're saying there, when you're explaining exactly what many of us are probably listening to at the moment in the background as, as the audience, will understand that it is very hard sometimes when you're trying to meditate to not fall asleep. And that's because it's probably the first time in your day that you've actually allowed yourself to relax. Yeah. And when you're kind of sending that message to yourself to to relax and to quieten the mind, you instantly start to fall asleep. And it's, it's a discipline. And it is a discipline learning to meditate. It's not it's not easy actually. It's no. actually quite hard, which is you know why it's incorporated in lots of other. Um, traditions like yoga and tai chi and different practices that that require mental agility it's not an easy thing to do well, i've never been able to fully do a meditation without any sort of guidance at all i mm-hmm. physically can't sit there in my own space and turn my mind off yeah i really struggle to do that but i think as well it's looking at why you are why why you feel that you're why well, you struggle to do that i think a lot of it when i was younger from maybe 18 onwards of when I wanted to start you know better in myself and and becoming more aware and you know spiritually open whenever I would sit in silence I would panic that I was going to get spirit come through and try and talk to me Mm -hmm. so I hated sitting in pure silence Mm -hmm. because of that fear which obviously is completely silly now to think that because you can meditate and not have spirit come through to you Mm -hmm. but that was a worry of mine and I think I'm so hyper aware of noises and and sounds and things that if I was to sit there in silence, as soon as I hear something, it distract me. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that again is quite common for people that have the recollection and memory of their of their ability to of their well, sorry, excuse me, I'm getting my words muddled up there. That they have the ability of all of that psychic knowingness mm-hmm. and their their mediumistic ability from young is is very prominent and i think there's a lot of people that have that kind of feeling of being frightened yeah. um and you know i think from very young we're very much programmed if you like to be very conscious all the time and have distraction in our life so it's, it's quite alien to us to actually sit down and try and meditate isn't it it's not yeah. something that we find natural really it's you know it, we're just so used to being switched on and kind of busy with things. Mm. So I think the first thing I would suggest is, for most people, is to try and find an actual time of the day that is most suited for you to meditate. I think we should shut the door because I think the birds are on one today. <laughs> I can't get up. I wish you could have seen that because that was oh, funny. <laughs> Yeah, initially the birds were a nice addition to the uh, the background, but, but they've, now they're distracting. Since, they've since become a distraction and also very irritating to listen to. Yeah, which again is a great um, learning curve for you guys <laughs> when you're meditating to make sure that you're in a place where you've either got earphones in nice and securely or you're in a nice quiet place where you can be undisturbed. Um, because again, it takes mental focus um to go into that meditative state see all i could focus on while we were talking was the birds mm-hmm. that was all i was listening to because yeah, you were being distracted so yeah. i hope that that hasn't distracted people from listening no that are on the podcast now hopefully you're still with us and still here because initially it was really nice but they were getting more and more loud and my brain was just completely focusing on the birds and that's what happens when i meditate yeah. if i hear a floorboard creak somewhere that's yeah. it I'm, I'm, I'm out of it. You're distracted instantly. But again, that's an ADHD thing, isn't it? You're yeah. easily distracted. Yeah. So that is, you know, and there's probably a lot of people listening to this podcast right now that can say, oh, that's me, I'm like that. I do that, that happens yeah. to me. Or I've got ADHD, I struggle with that as well. Yeah. You know, so I think you're, you're going to probably say to me, well, how do we get around that? Well, it's about trial and error. It's finding something that works for you, mm-hmm. you know, taking yourself away from where you are or plugging in your earphones so that you can't be distracted playing a specific noise and just gradually repeating that practice of trying to quieten your mind even if that takes you months to just achieve that first little part of it yeah you know just keep doing that spending that 10 minutes just what would you say if you're like if you're a mum 
So you well, don't yeah, get any time as it is. And then you also struggle to meditate when you actually do find the time, miraculously. Yeah. Would you say maybe you could do... Is it... Because I've seen people do shower meditation. Yeah, I was just about to say to you... There's a, you know, there's a way of building up to that meditation um, Stack it practice. on top of other things. Well, is, is being mindful, you know, because mindfulness is a form of meditation and it's a form of med- meditation practice. So going for a mindful walk, what, taking the children out in the buggy. So that's what I do. And when they fall then. asleep, yeah, and, and take them for a nice walk. Yeah. Somewhere where you feel you're connected to nature maybe, like so the beach. I am, like you, I am you meditating then. So when I go out for a walk, mm. I don't obviously, <clears> if I'm if the kids are awake when I go out, I don't have my headphones in because I like to hear them. So if I'm walking along listening to the birds, listening to the nature, ruffling of the trees and the ocean when I'm walking down the beach, that's meditation. It's a form it's of a meditation. Fork, because it's, it's mindfulness. Yeah. Right, okay. So you're taking yourself... I'm doing better than I thought then. Yeah, exactly. And I think most people, just spending that bit of time, that me time, yeah. for you is, is, is you know, paramount, really, yeah. in keeping yourself centred, isn't it? In keeping yeah. yourself not going crazy with yeah. all the, the mundane tasks of being a full-time mum. You know, it's, it's hard work, as most of you will, that have children here will understand. I... Myself included, you know, you, you forget sometimes I am also your mum and I have been the mum of two children with ADHD and, you know, I moved miles away from all my family when I was a lot were young and I lived pretty much on my own because daddy worked, you know, nights a lot of the time and I was on my own with you children. So it is about, it's not impossible to find time to meditate or be mindful. It's just being creative with it. Yeah. And, you know, like you say, the shower meditations, if you manage to get that few minutes to yourself or when the children fall asleep... Use that opportunity. Yeah. You know, when they have a nap, use that opportunity. It's a form of self-care, really, isn't it? It really is a form of self-care, 100%. And I think we're all guilty of, at times, not making that space for ourselves. You know, we're we're constantly caring for other people and putting other people as a priority when really we should be loving ourselves with the same vigour that we love others. Because I find... And we don't do that. I find that of an evening, when when the kids are asleep and I'm winding down... If I was to just sit in the darkness, I'd fall straight asleep. Mm. But if I've got little lamps on or little candles, yeah. I feel more inclined to actually want to do some sort of reflection or mm. journaling or meditation or something like that because it puts yeah. you in that sort of mindset, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, 100%. When you're in that, in that sort of mood. Yeah, 100%. It's, you know, it's a way of being able to you know, slow down and get into that space. I mean, there's been lots of research, actually, Um, into the roles of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems and how we cope with stress and the parasympathetic sorry the sympathetic nervous system is designed um, to respond to stress triggers so that we can act quickly and decisively and um, you know it kind of releases the adrenaline so this is known as the fight or flight response but um, really we want to be getting into the parasympathetic nervous system which is where we're in the rest and digest space where our body gets the chance to regulate its processes and restore calm and and kind of get into that you know space where we repair and we're you know in a relaxed mindset and that's the transition we we kind of need to get into and that's what meditation also helps us with when when we was talking at the beginning about the physicalities you know meditation isn't just about quietening the mind and you know hopefully seeing a few interesting things that our subconscious wants to show us it's also a way that our body gets a chance to rest and digest and you know initiate repairs in the body and restore calm and you know equilibrium and balance um so you know if you can find time in the morning or in the evening if that suits you to do you know relaxing things it, it will help your body to transition from that fight or flight state into that rest and digest state otherwise you kind of run the risk of you know putting your body under constant stress on a regular basis which really isn't good for you you know in the long term and it certainly isn't going to help you to um you know get to a place where you're connecting your higher higher being and your your soul and connecting to your spirit it's you're going to be constantly stressed out all the time and on burnout you know so for someone who has never really had the time to sit down and learn about meditation because it is it is a an art form kind of isn't it you've got yeah, to sort of teach your brain and, and you've got yeah, to learn how to do it what what books would you recommend to start out with if you're really interested in this and you want to just you know could you just sit there and just go on I, youtube or would you need to sort of do a bit of research i would into say this? personally um you do need to do a little bit of research with regard to meditation not so much as in who you're 
meditating with but finding what works for you because there's so many different types of meditation that you can do like like you said there's mindfulness meditations where you can just you know become mindful going for walks having showers being mindful in your everyday life so some really good um things to do are to research people that you know write books on mindfulness um there's a few good ones i can recommend you um i'll put them in the um in the recommendation lists in the um group community the yes. sacred soul community we've had quite a few requests for that this we week have, by the way yeah. as a side note yeah so, so make uh, sure you're joining i mean there's a couple that i i would say well, there was one book that i really enjoy which is the secrets of meditation by david g and that is a really interesting book it's a, you know a guide to sort of inner peace and personal transformation and that i kind of read that and, and done quite a few of his meditations over the years which have been really interesting and he also has um youtube channels and you know again deepak chopra another one of my um, my favorites his voice is so calm Mm. Um, but again I think once you you get yourself into the routine of a, of a meditation practice you'll start to explore different types of meditation um, you might decide to use candle gazing you might decide to um, use sound you, mantra um, you might decide to do vocal toning there's so many different things even yoga nidra again that's another form of meditation in yoga practice it's kind of movements no, and positions I don't get along with that at all yoga yeah nidra. you don't really like that do you but i really like that no. because it's more restorative yoga as well and i struggle a lot with my physical health yeah so for me something that really distracts me from meditation is pain yeah um because obviously i'm in a lot of pain most of the time um for those of you that don't know, obviously that uh, and you know have not seen me on my Facebook before or any of my social media channels, you would probably realise that um, you you wouldn't know that I suffer with a condition called fibromyalgia, um, and I also have a lot of autoimmune diseases. Um, at the moment, I'm I'm quite anemic as well, um, so I've got lots of kind of um, health issues that create a lot of pain and discomfort for me. I've got some arthritis as well. So for those of you that are listening that, you know, do struggle with pain, it's going to be imperative for you to get yourself really comfortable before you start to meditate. So whether that means that you do take any pain relief you need or you use a herbal remedy for that or you get yourself into a position that's comfortable and cushioned and, you know, that people say the best position for meditation really is to sit cross-legged. But again, it's not physically possible for everybody. Um, personally laying down isn't ideal because it is going to be making you more inclined to fall asleep which is what you find Beth isn't yeah. it um, so mm-hmm. really if you can be in a seated position that's better for you um, but yeah I would I would say that's probably my biggest hurdle in meditation is the pain being able to get into a position where I'm not in pain so sometimes you might have to change your meditation practice for different points of the day when you know that you're perhaps more managed with your pain um, and again, like you were saying with mum's Beth, sometimes yeah. it's, you know, you're having to manage that um, routine around what's going to fit in with your children. Well, yeah, it's another another task to add to the list. But like you say, it's a form of self-care. Yeah, it's exactly. the same. It's the same as making sure you've got time to brush your teeth each day yeah. and have a shower. You know, it should be held to the same standard as that, yeah. really, because it's and mental it's, well-being. Exactly. And it's not always, you know, it's not really a great way to look at it is it's a chore because no. obviously if you're looking at it as a chore you're not going to actually enjoy it no. and I think again it is all about how we put our intentions out there yeah you, know? you want it to be something you look forward to each day as you're winding down time yeah exactly for each and week or however I was, long I was listening to um, uh, an episode from the guy that I am learning Ayurveda with and he was talking about these experiments that um, that have been done on plants to um, understand intention and that they were they, they discovered this experiment to to burn the leaves of a plant and measure its electro frequency and see you know whether it withdrawed its energy field um, when it was being burnt and how it reacted and that kind of thing and without rambling on about it basically the the, the kind of crux of it was that the plant actually reacted in its electromagnetic field and its vibrational frequency with the intent that someone was going to burn it before it actually got burnt in a more kind of profound way than it actually did when it was being burnt, when the leaves were being burnt. So the energy frequency was more pronounced just from the intention. So my point in that ramble and coming off the kind of topic a little bit there is that when you're saying it's a chore, you're already setting 
that intention that it's going to yeah, be a chore for a you. Chore. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you're already you're kind of already setting yourself up for failure in that respect. What I think we should perhaps be more mindful of doing is setting ourselves the intention of I'm going to explore this. Mm. I'm going to, you know, experiment with this. This is going to be something exciting to to try and see and see what you know happens. See how it affects me. Yeah. So you know, I think. As a, as a topic of discussion for, for the podcast, I think it's important that, you know, people were aware that it isn't necessarily an easy thing to meditate. Yeah, definitely. And that I think the, the you know, people feel like they're perhaps, you know, there's something wrong with them and they can't meditate or, you know, they think, I know I did to start with years ago. I used to think, oh, you know, well, I can't meditate, there's something wrong with me. Mm. But it's, it's absolutely not that at all. You It's about practice, yeah. you know. When you're a child... You don't necessarily know how to clean your teeth straight away, do you? You're being shown that, and it's that you know. That's why they call it practicing meditation, don't they? they exactly. Say that you are practicing. Exactly that, and you know, again, things like light and things like that are really effective too when you're meditating. So you know, we talk very much about circadian rhythms in Ayurveda and about how important they are with balancing your whole energy, really. And you know, your circadian rhythms are probably going to be at their most potent in the mornings you know when you first wake up um and you're most susceptible to light at that time you know and so making sure that you use light effectively to meditate like not going on your mobile phones if you're going to be doing it in the evening for example because your body's slowing down and you're going into that natural detox phase anyway so your body's starting to slow down so really you know exposure to anything more than perhaps red light um, or a really dim light of an evening. So that's what I said earlier be, about having the candles. Yeah, or, or a salt lamp or, yeah. or something like that yeah. to help you if you're going to do it in the evening, just so you've got a little bit of light there, but not complete darkness and also not really bright light because that's going to affect your ability to, to meditate. And, you know, because obviously exposure to white light during the day has the most positive effects, you know, including boosting alertness and mood. Um, and blue light has the strongest impact, you know. So, again... My perception of that is, you know, when you look at a bright blue sky like today, for example, it makes you feel really energised, doesn't it? It makes you feel really awake and alert. Yeah. So it's using using light and using colour as well to help you with your meditation practice. You know, just being mindful that certain things will perhaps activate brain activity when you're really wanting to kind of slow that down. Your breath, again, very important. You know, there's there's a lot of talk about soma breath at the moment as well. Um but breath work in general, I know Wim Hof does a lot to do with breath and things like that, to do with healing and physical healing. But it, breath is really important when it comes to meditation as well. You know, hold, holding your breath and doing breath sequences is really important. Trying to get your mind to relax, your body to relax. Your breathing can be very much used to put you into that parasympathetic um, space where you relax and you're kind of calm. And then you're more receptive to being able to meditate. So it's all about preparation. Um, it's, it's very much about getting yourself prepared for what you're going to do. Set the intention yeah. of what you're planning on doing. And look at it as, an ex, you know, like I said, an experimental process. And something that's a self-healing and a self-loving act. Like what you were just saying, Beth. Yeah. You know, because sometimes it's hard to think of things to do that are kind to yourself. But Yeah, that's the ultimate thing you can do to be kind to yourself is to look after your mental well-being as well, 100%. isn't it? 100%. And meditation, you know, that, that is proven to enhance your mental health, your physical health, your digestion. You know, it, it's it, there's so many benefits to meditation. You know, I, I, I couldn't literally record all of them on here. Yeah. But I ask you to do your own research, you know. In, you know, it, it's so interesting when you start to, you know, research into different types of meditations, the different techniques, and you know, there's just such a lot out there for you to to access. You know, and I think once you can navigate your way around a meditation practice, you're starting your journey. You're starting your journey on connecting to who am I? Mm. Who is this person that resides within this physical body? Yeah. What is what is my purpose here? You can start asking those kind of questions of your higher consciousness, your soul, and, mm. and it will communicate with you. You yeah. know, it will show you symbolism, imagery, 
physical feelings. You know, I know, I mean, I've been meditating for many years now and I still have times where I struggle with meditation. You know, I still have times where I, th- I feel like I'm really not in a good place to do it. And But that's when you should do it the most. <laughs> yeah, because you feel yeah. better for it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know, there's times when I've just, I feel stressed, I feel anxious because obviously I suffer with anxiety. Um, I, like I said to you before, with the fibromyalgia, I do suffer a lot with anxiety. Um, and I, I've, I've had panic attacks over the years and bouts of depression and you know, kind of that's affected my well-being and meditation has really been something that has helped me greatly through those times um, and as well as connecting to my my soul and my, my you know, inner observer, if you like. And again, in that book, um, The Untethered Soul, it, it, it talks very much about the observer and that being almost like the seat of your soul, really. And um, I hope this isn't too rambly and you, you kind of listening still to my, my my voice and understanding where I'm coming from with this but it is an intrinsic part of you developing a connection to yourself um, and I think we spend so much of our day don't we just really being of use to other people helping other people doing things for other people especially when you're a mum um, but also at work you know yeah. you're, you're constantly doing things for everybody else all the time and meditation is the only time really that you're giving back to yourself you know, and it is interesting. I mean, a, a couple of friends of mine have done have had some very profound meditations where they've actually got into past lives and they've been able to then research back that information they were given in a meditation from their highest purpose wow. or their soul, if you like, their yeah. their high frequency, and it's communicated past lives to them. They've been able to connect with their guides. They've been able to connect with animal totems and. You know, I mean, we're talking about this going down the line here. These are the kind of possibilities with meditation. Out-of-body experiences. So you say this, and the first and only time I've ever had a successful meditation where I've got something like that through Mm -hmm. was when I did a guided meditation on meeting my spirit guides, and that was about a year ago now. And that was the most successful meditation I'd ever had because I was focused the entire time. Mm -hmm. And everything I saw was clear as day. I remember the whole thing now, even a year later. And I wrote it down and journaled on it for a yeah. long time afterwards because it was so profound what came through to me that at that time. Mm-hmm. And that was because I'd actually had the time to set aside an hour to mm-hmm. myself to actually sit and do the meditation, to listen properly, to focus properly, and to feel in you know completely engulfed in the whole act of self-care rather mm-hmm. than it just being a quick five minutes here and there. Yeah that's when I had the best the best effect come from the meditation. Yeah. So that's what I'd like to get to again. I would like to really have that focus on meditation in my life and try and find the time mm-hmm. to do it. So I think I'm sort of on the same boat as a lot of the people that are listening to this thinking I'd really love to do that, but I just don't know where I'm going to find the time to do it. Yeah, but that's because at the minute you've just had two children. Yeah. You've got two children under well actually one that's just turned two but two 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 under under two two year olds really um and in a very short space of time and you know your whole life's changing at the moment so you're going through a transitional period aren't you your 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 body's going through a, a transformation and your your life's going through a transformative process so that's when meditation really is important yeah. but it's also very difficult to, to schedule in yeah you know and and I think another really interesting thing that you know should be mentioned um, when we're talking about meditation is your diet yeah because you know don't be having a massive heavy meal before you're going to meditate because you're going to be distracted by all of the workings of your digestive system yeah, you, you know sluggish and a bit of wind well, yeah. should we say or <laughs> you know a bit of indigestion or yeah. popping in your tummy uncomfortable. and uncomfortable feelings yeah. and sensations again it would be it'd be stupid to to be drinking alcohol because that might make you feel very sleepy um again it could also evoke a lot of emotions that overwhelm you that you might not be um, able to process in that in that time of meditation and also caffeine again it's going to make it very difficult for you to be able to relax you're going to feel very jittery um so it's just being really careful and planning out that time to meditate that you're not you know you haven't just been down the pub or you haven't just downed a bottle of red bull not that i would ever suggest you do that because it's probably toxic waste in my opinion but i know people do drink red bull so the the world's smallest fan of red bull yeah and also because because of my um i don't have any caffeine in my diet whatsoever um, and that's because of my anxiety and fibromyalgia i learned quite a long time ago actually that caffeine was the enemy (laughs) really the enemy um and produced a lot of um, heart issues for myself um in time when I wasn't 
paying attention to my body. So, you know, I would always advocate that, you know, you try to reduce your caffeine intake massively if you can. Um, and those of you those of you that are coffee lovers now are going to be sending sending hate <laughs> sending my way. Hate. How dare you suggest that I, we stop drinking our coffee and I tea? I speak for the coffee lovers out there because mm. I am a massive coffee lover. However, I am a converted decaf girl now because mm. of the impact it has on my body and yeah. the migraines that I get are just <clears throat> horrendous and I used to drink coffee every day regularly so and much coke. caffeine and oh and coke and I am an actual I am addicted to coke I will say not that kind of coke but coke zero yeah. is the yeah. one McDonald's coke zero in fact is my weakness and my vice and I can't go a day without drinking the McDonald's coke zero so which is really bad for you and extreme. obviously Beth knowing what she knows about <laughs> herbalism bad. and chemicals in the I body know. but again we're all human beings here we're all spirit living a human experience and we're all going to be tempted by these you can't cut off everything yeah you we're going to be tempted by these guises and um desires I and try my best things that take us off of our path and kind of make things very much more difficult for us. But you my know. point before I started rambling was that it you do feel the impact, you do feel the difference when you don't have yeah. these things. Especially as well, I know before meditation, but also before bed. Mm-hmm. If it can make that much of an impact while you're settling down t- to sleep, you don't feel like you want to go to sleep, you feel energised, you feel uncomfortable, you feel like you're constantly moving and doing things. How the hell are you going to actually sit down and shut quiet your mind up exactly. to, to be able to, to meditate properly? Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen, And also, it? having something like caffeine, these are going to also trigger your, you know, um, sympathetic nervous system, mm. isn't it? It's going to... Because it's it, it's a, a caffeine that's making your adrenaline pump and, yeah. you know, you're... It puts your body in that you're, place, you're going isn't into it? that hypervigilance, mm. which... You know, which is what caffeine does, isn't it? it? Puts your body into that hypervigilance. It increases your heart rate, increases your blood pressure. You know, it's not really a good thing to be putting in your body just before you're about to meditate. Which is again why I suggest trying to do a meditation either in the morning before you've eaten or drunk anything, um, or in the evening when you've had a few hours respectively before going to bed. I mean, again, according to Ayurveda, I know I keep quoting this, but it's probably best to have at least three hours um, of, of kind of no food or heavy food before you're about to go to sleep. Give your body time. Because when we get when it gets to about 10 o'clock in the evening, our bodies actually go into um, a detox mode naturally. Our body naturally detoxes ourselves of all of the, you know, the things that we don't need and that we don't want. And it kind of dumps it all out into our digestive system and into our urinary system. And we get rid of that and we excrete that out of our bodies. So, you know, again, it's probably the not a good idea to be you know heavily loading yourself up with food before bed anyway um because that doesn't help restful sleep let alone a meditation practice so what i would always advise people when they're going to start the practice of meditation is those things that we've discussed which is to schedule a time set an intention you know um try to facilitate that on a daily basis if possible or at least set aside a, a weekly regime even if it's just one or two times a week, you know, be mindful of your diet before and after. Be di- be be mindful of, you know, um, noise, comfortability. You know, your the position in which you're sitting. Um, making sure that your pain's managed. Making sure that your kids are managed. <laughs> you know, all of those things that contribute to you meditating. And then, you know, f- experiment in a little bit. You know, make it a fun. Try a few different things out to see which which works best for you. And then you can begin then you can actually start your journey with meditation. I mean, I'm going to do a few meditations on this, um, not so much on the podcast, but I'm going to put them in the uh, Sacred Soul pod community on the Facebook um, page so that people can access and download some. But there's some fantastic mediums and spiritual, uh, you know, workers out there that that give their own meditations out. And, you know, you can either buy them or you can download them from... I don't know, SoundCloud or um, Spotify or Apple Apple Pod, you know, all those kind of things you can download that that from. So, yeah. um, I mean, I'd probably recommend a few off the top of my hat. I know Gordon Smith does a few wonderful meditations, as does Tony Stockwell, um, and also Deepak Chopra, David G, um, Gabby Bernstein. There's a few different um, 
people that I've you know listened to over the years and there's some wonderful music soundtracks as well like Kevin Kendall's a really good one Krishna Das is really good I mean you'll have to experiment with with things yourself and it's see good to have a jumping go. off point though isn't it yeah it's good to have a jumping off point but again I am very much that we well, I'm very much of the mindset that we're all very unique individuals and that what works for one person won't work for another we're our vibrational frequency is so unique mm. um each and every one of us that we need to experiment with what works for us. Yeah. You know, when when I'm working with sound healing, you know, with people, mm. there's certain sounds that... Um, sorry, that was just my phone going off. I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> there's certain sounds that um, resonate with others that others find really, di- like, uncomfortable. You know, they don't, they don't kind of gel with it and they don't feel that it's conductive for them to relax. So it is about experimenting with yourself, really. Um, so... Yeah, bringing that to a close, I suppose, really on the on the on the basis of meditation and finding the time to meditate. Um, do you feel like we've talked about? Is there anything you want to add, Beth, to any of that? I've I've just found it interesting to listen to you from your perspective because you're someone that's done it for a very long time. I'm not saying you're old or anything, but I'm just oh, saying. That, <laughs> I'm just saying you've done it for a very long time. Yeah. It's been a, you know an intrinsic part of your practice and your growth spiritually. Mm. You know, there's a lot of things that I've learned today that I feel that I will be able to, you know, impart mm. on my own journey as well. And I think that a lot of people listening would benefit from maybe having a guided meditation from you. Yeah. I think that would be like quite a good place to start as well. Yeah, well, um, like I say, I'll do one and we'll put it on the, um, put it on the community, sacred hub. community hub. I mean, another I thing I just want to add before we finish really is that, you know, if you're suffering with mental health, then meditation really is a fantastic way of being able to regulate um, those kind of, you know, the dopamine, serotonin and all those kind of things. It's a really good way of being able to regulate that. And what I will say is sometimes when we, we meditate, when we, when we have some mental health problems, we can, you know, it can evoke a lot of emotional response in us. You know, we can be confronted with things that we've perhaps repressed and held back. Um, and it, it can be a little bit daunting, I think, sometimes when, when you know that you're feeling a little bit vulnerable and that you, you know, you, you've been kind of being defensive and not wanting to explore those emotions with yourself. And when you go into meditation mode, and I know a lot of people have experienced this in that healing crisis is when they've had sound healing sessions or they've had like healing sessions with myself that all of a sudden you get overwhelmed a little bit of emotion so please don't be frightened if that does happen to you you know if you start a meditation practice and you get overwhelmed with emotion just allow that process to unfold you know because it's obviously needing that release and i think yeah you know a lot of the time what we don't realize is we don't get in touch with those emotions a lot of the time and then they block our connection to our soul to our purpose to you know, our unconscious. So I think you need to just let them out. So don't be frightened if you see perhaps some weird and wonderful things to start with. Sometimes we can have some visualizations that can be, you know, a bit strange and you think, oh, why am I seeing that? That's a bit odd and that's made me feel a bit uncomfortable. But you just need to, you know, if any time you're feeling uncomfortable, then come out of your meditation and explore what that was you were seeing or what you've you've experienced Mm. and, you know, try to find an answer to that you know giving you an explanation of where I'm coming from with that when I first started meditating um years ago I um I used to have this experience of seeing like a wolf um on a wolf's face and it used to I used to feel like it was coming at me in my mind's eye like and it used to really make me anxious and I used to think oh my god I don't like that that's not very nice um and then I started to explore what that was and I gradually what I realized was the wolf was just a symbol. It was just a sim- it was just symbolic of my repressed anger and, mm. and and things that I was holding on to. And it was really just like almost like the the wolf felt like it was attacking me, but really it was about me feeling attacked, you know, feeling um, confronted and feeling like within my own um, family and within my own you know social networks that I was feeling vulnerable and and you know that wolf imagery was just showing me that symbolism of trying to help me to understand what was happening that's why it's important to do your research afterwards isn't it it's like when you have dreams and you have to search up what your dreams mean because your unconscious is constantly showing you different things and it's trying to communicate and trying to communicate through symbolism and imagery and different different things like that and you'd be surprised you know that there's so much information there it's like a library you know i always imagine whenever i 
now meditate, I always see myself almost going into the halls of learning, like this majestic building. Almost. Like Hogwarts. <laughs> a bit like that, yeah, yeah, I suppose. Like, And I imagine myself going into this corridor or a checkered floor and all these different, win- and all these different doorways that open. And, mm. you know, I have a lot of meditations that are like that where I kind of go into a different room and, and there'll be someone there waiting to talk to me about something really interesting or, yeah. you know. And sometimes they're really boring ones where, you know, I just struggle to get into that space and, and I might see a colour or, you know, and, yeah. or... An, or nothing much at all really but I just know I've been at peace for 10 15 minutes yeah you know sometimes well, at least I can go you've on for an it. hour yeah you know it just depends on again what's happening to you at that moment in time what you're experiencing on an emotional level um and how able you are to get into that space we're not always able to climb there it with ease sometimes mm. it you know it takes a few attempts or you know we have to abort and then try again the next day you know and see how we go um, but yes, yeah, so I just wanted to put that that part in really, just to encourage you not to give up when things do di- get difficult or you experience things that are a bit uncomfortable. And you know, I know there's a few occasions when I've done sound bath. You know, when I've been um, actually a participant of sound baths with other people, um, or meditations or yoga practices, and I've been overwhelmed with my own emotions. Yeah. You know, we're we're all like I said at the beginning, we're all spiritual beings having you know a human experience and emotions are an integral part of our human experience we you know we're, we're constantly you know blending with other people and interacting with other people and having you know emotional responses to things and stimuli and well, when you were training to do your sound therapy I remember having a gong bath and I didn't like it at all because it made me feel really overwhelmed mm. when I had it done and I think that's probably there was a lot of anxiety there of yeah. when I had it done I wasn't in a great space of mind Mm-hmm. to have that treatment done maybe and it all needed to come out but it just it freaked me out and I haven't had yeah. one since but I think maybe I would benefit from one now yeah because I'm in a better place yeah but I think it can be overwhelming if you've never done it before and you ha- you do oh sorry things have been thrown all over the room yeah um, that was me dropping the phone on the floor but I think you know it, you need to be prepared for in the case that it, something does come up and it does scare you or put you off or make you feel uncomfortable that you know, it's just your body trying to get yeah. rid of those emotions. Yeah, exactly. And again, when you're saying scare you, I don't think anything comes to scare you per se, but I get where you're coming from. Some yeah. things might come up that you, f- you feel, feel a bit anxious or, or a bit, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what I, I mean. don't like how that's making me feel, my, yeah. or my heart like feels like it's wolf. racing. Or, yeah. yeah, exactly. There's going to be sometimes things that feel a bit overwhelming. Um, but again, these are things that perhaps you're needing to confront and things that you're unconscious and your soul... And, and needing to bring to your awareness for you to process, mm. you know, and to look at. And like I say, I think with practice, you know, you can get some amazing meditation practices in place and experiences um, that really enhance your soul's growth. They enhance your relationship to, you know, especially with me with my mediumship, there's different types of meditation that you can do when you when you do mediumship. So you can do your, your basic mindfulness and your meditation. And then you do something that's called sitting in the power. And that's very much kind of connecting to your, your you know, your real intrinsic sacred power within you and allowing that to connect to the spirit world. So you're allowing, you know, your energy, your vibrational frequency to connect to the spirit world. And We've those, that those circle, two worlds we? blend, you know, those two, you know, energy fields are blending. And it's kind of, you know, that's an, and again, a very interesting place to be because you're almost allowing the spirit world to kind of almost come within you in that in that respect. Yeah, you're kind of, you're putting your, your energy up yeah. to meet that, um, the energy of the spirit world. And then you're bringing those combined energies down into your own space where you reside so that you can then be the medium and communicate. So then again, that is really... All encompassing the fact that you're just a subtle having an earthly experience. Mm-hmm. Your body's just a vessel. Yeah. Isn't it? For exactly. energy and, and for spirit. Really. really? I think, in, obviously, you don't want to go on to a completely another tangent of another podcast episode here, but I think the body really almost is almost, to some degree, I find it like an imprisonment, really, of the soul. It's, it's almost like the physical body is withholding all of what you are. And all of what you're capable of, you yeah. know, and and I think we can become very 
enslaved by our bodies and our bodily functions and our emotions and you know and and our soul isn't really allowed to sing and to be set free and i think that's what meditation is really helping you to realize that you are more than just your physicality you are more than just your emotions you are more than your daily job and your routines mm. you are so much more than all of those things you know you that's are what this... you would think of to make up your whole identity is a collection of all of those things yeah exactly but you're not but you're not you're 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 you Exactly, and then you, you gave the question again, who am I? Yeah. And we go back to that book, The Untethered Soul, which I would highly recommend you to read yeah. because it is a fascinating book. I remember when I first picked it up, I couldn't put it down yeah. <laughs> because it was I just like, that. wow, yeah. that is really interesting, yeah. you know, what, what he talks about. Well, in when that we book. were having the conversation last night, weren't we, in preparation for this, and we sat yeah. down with Dad and we were just having a conversation on what this episode was basically going to be about, mm. and I just was not grasping what you was trying to what try you yeah. was trying to get at and I just couldn't understand what you were saying but when I'd gone to bed and I had I'd actually thought on it and I thought yeah that is that is right because mm -hmm. they're just the things that make up your earthly journey and your day to day but they're yeah. not actually who you are who am I yeah exactly that's what you have to ask yourself isn't it yeah who am I you know and I think the interesting part of that as well when I before I read the book I, I would have said well I'm Faye yeah you know well who's Faye yeah. you know well I'm my mum and and they said, oh, no, well, they're just the things that you do. They're the, you know, yeah. that's not who you really are, is it? Yeah. You know, and I think when reading this book, what it really draws to the fore is that really you're not even the voice in your head because somebody's in there listening to it. Yeah. So as well. Yeah. So when you're, you know, when you're talking to yourself in your head, someone's listening to that. So who's that person listening to it? Is it you that's talking or you that's listening or you that's both? Is it two different parts of your brain that's doing it? Well, it makes it, that's but you're what not I mean. your brain either, are I, yeah, you? Because that's, that's part true. of your physicality. That's just a part of your body, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I, we're going a bit deep here, so hopefully we're not. Yeah. No, I think, <laughs> we won't end too deeply. No, but that's a, good, that's a good place to end it because it will leave you to ponder Yeah, ponder on existence. those thoughts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you'll hopefully not have an existential crisis right now like I was having <laughs> last night. I was sat there thinking, oh my God. Yeah. This makes no sense, but it does make sense now. But when you first hear it, you think, oh my God, what does this even mean? Yeah. But I think maybe a, a good idea as well would be to pop a little guided journal entry onto the community hub yeah. that helps you to sort of direct those thoughts of who are you, you yeah. know, and help you to sort of figure out exactly who you are within yourself mm. and also with with the podcast we did with Pam when we were speaking a, a lot about um the soul and the north yes. node and kind of finding your soul's purpose also you want to really get to know your soul yeah it's important your, to get your, to know your, your spirit, yourself, spirit and your it? soul because I believe you know they're they're kind of two separate things really because the spirit's the energy of you but then there's actually the the blueprint of you and the, the you that be, kind of it doesn't belong, cause it, but, but it kind of resides within the collective yeah. of other souls, that, that paradigm, you know. So I think, again, like I say, we don't want to go off on a tangent and talk about another topic completely and entirely, we which we tend that. to do, don't we? We, we go, we that, jump from, we? and again, that's the ADHDs in us, you know, we forward. jump from subject to subject. Um, but hopefully this has been an interesting episode for you to process and to maybe just, you know, um, think about... Um, looking into perhaps getting that book which i would suggest you do because it is a new york best times uh, sorry a new york times bestseller <laughs> how long did it take you to read oh the book? god don't. <laughs> oh yeah can you imagine going back and forwards i'm over gonna and read over. that now i'm gonna um yeah i'm gonna take that off you later and, and apparently on the front cover it says read this book carefully and you will get more than a glimpse of eternity and that's from deepak chopra that's saying that so he knows what he's on about he well. knows what he's on about and you know i love deepak i really enjoy his um, meditations and his voice he, his voice is just so you know relaxing and yeah it's meditative isn't it his voice and uh, i love his uh, he's got some really great affirmation um meditations as well where it talks you through loving yourself and things so again that's a really good person to look up if you're just beginning your journey obviously i know i've got to have a lot of people on this podcast that are you know seasoned meditators and you know have been doing their journey for many many years but we're kind of wanting to um be inclusive of of all people here when we're talking on sacred soul now, there's some people very much at the beginning of their journey and even just the thought of meditating 
you know, for them is a big step in that yeah, direction. Definitely. So, you know, those of you that are seasoned meditators, then you know yourself how, you know, it's it's very important, even for the people that are doing this on a regular basis, to keep a journal, to, you know, to write down, to keep a, you know, a soul journal of your experiences and your communications, your communings with your soul, you know, and I think you you then build up a relationship with, you know, the integral part of who you are, the essence of your being. And on, on that, that note, note, there you go. Follow your soul. It knows, <laughs> knows the, the way. way. <laughs>